It don't get no better than that for me. Probably destroyed an arrow though. You know what the hardest thing is about doing reviews? It's trying to figure out how to start them. This is a long overdue review of the Trijicon AccuPen bow sight. Now this is not an unboxing video. Um, I've had this site for well over a year now. From now, though, we'll just go ahead and move it out of the way and take a look at the box that it comes in. Of course, Trujicon, you expect nothing less than a big old case. Uh, so this is where the AccuDial would go, your AccuPen would go, and the mounting bracket is here. They also give you an extra sight pin, and here's a rail for mounting it on a different type of sight that can take a post like that you know so it's nice to give you that here's where your tools would go uh, you look up here to the top you get your owner's manual which you'll need that that's very important to keep that out uh, here's the warranty card and eh, there's a special offer eh, who cares here's a sticker that's kind of nice something to give to you go ahead and put that on the back of your window of your vehicle you know for a contents listing you know tell the thieves what you got warranty card uh, you don't really need the warranty card. If you want to just mail it in, that's fine. They give it to you. Uh, you can go right on the website and register with them, and I recommend that you do that. Uh, you know, there's a lot of money to spend on a site to begin with. Not to uh, put a warranty on it is kind of silly. So we'll keep the uh, owner's manual out because we're going to need that. We'll move this out of the way and bring the site back into view. Okay. First, we'll talk about the site a little bit. Um, it's made out of aircraft grade aluminum. It also uses 0.80 fiber optics, tritium fiber optics, which is, well, at the time they, they designed this site, was the largest fiber optics that was offered in an archery site, and for good reasons. Um, a lot of times you can't put that big of a fiber optic and have a small enough um, aim point, which is one of the things about the AccuPen site is you actually get stuck with a triangle at the very end which actually give you the smallest minute of angle aiming point in the industry at least up to this point I mean if you, somebody out there has got .10 and stuff like that uh, those are pretty small too so I don't know how big of a difference it is I do like the fact that you do have the clear post that's transparent so you don't have to worry about your sight post getting in the way of, of your target what you're seeing uh, that's something usually easily overcome but it, it's something that has bothered me over the years and you point to what you're going to aim at you also, you don't need any tapes with this, you don't need any lights or batteries or anything else. Um, the good thing about not having the tapes that the, the dial is laser engraved all the way around to 80 to 20. So one of the first things you need to do is know how to set it up. And getting to the setup is where the owner's manual is really going to come into play initially. Um, the best thing I can tell you to do, the quickest and easiest thing to do uh, when you go to do the setup is you got to set up the bow sync to match the speed of your bow. If you can go to a pro shop, use a chronograph, you have your own chronograph, and use your actual setup, you can use your IBO speed to do this, but as most of us know, that very rarely does our hunting or archery setup actually, you know, target setup ever actually equal the IBO speed. Some people do. Uh, mine don't, by no means. I am, have a 27 inch draw length. So that slows down my bow, you know, 30, 40 feet per second right there. By the time you put a peep sight on the bow, you put your D loop on the bow, you, you just add these grains of weight to your string, you are slowing down your bow. So if you got the chance to go use a chronograph, I strongly recommend you do that. That's going to save you so much more time. Now, I originally purchased this for the uh, Z7 Extreme that I was shooting. Um, I chronoed that bow at 279 feet per second. So you open up the manual. Let's see. At setting number 3, it would be 270. At setting number 4, it would be 280. So I set it to setting number 4. And that was pretty close on my bow to begin with. So to set it, you pick it up. And this knob in the back, and you have 
that your numbers for your bow sync is actually in here. I'm hoping there's enough light to actually see that. Yeah, you can see the lines anyway, but the numbers in there, there's a little pointer in there to tell you where it's at. I set it to number four, and then, you know, I just kind of guess. Don't worry about these numbers right now, because if you put it on 20, it's probably going to be off anyway. Hopefully, you can go to an indoor range or something that's got a big wall of foam and stuff that you can shoot, so you won't be too far off. Uh, kind of like setting up any bow sight, though. You can, you know, there's, there's some methods to uh, figuring that out. So let's say it was hit here, and this is where 20 was being, but your your line's down here. Well, you loosen up your set screw, roll this to 20 yards, retighten your set screw, there you go. Now you're set in at, sighted at 20 yards. Now they tell you to go out to at least 40, 40 yards. So, uh, you know, roll your dial down to 40, shoot an arrow, see where it hits. Uh, if you can go 50, 60 yards, you'd be better off. If you are if you can shoot good groups out to that, uh, I'll tell you just shoot whatever good group you can, best you can, and get an ideal adjustment is it. If you shoot, let's say we'll, we'll keep it at 40. You shoot 40, you hit high, you'll reach down here to your bow sink, and you'll turn it up to reach a higher number. If you hit low, you turn it down low. Um, at least that part's really, really simple. So high is high and low is low. You don't get no better than that. Now, once you've done that, they claim that your bow is automatically sighted in all the way out to 80 yards. Well, awesome. Great, right? Well, there's that wasn't my experience. Um, with the Z7 Extreme having a 28-inch axle-to-axle, my short draw length and my particular anchor point, um, when I had it sighted in 20 yards, the dial would only go to 75 yards, which was fine for me because I don't shoot that far to begin with. I'm not that great of a bow shot. I'm trying to get better though, but for me taking a, a shot of an animal past 50 yards is, is a little bit out of the question. I'm, I'm comfortable at 50. I need to shoot longer ranges to be a better shot at that. Until I'm a better shot at those ranges, I won't shoot at an animal hunting and and kind of actually a little timid shooting at a target too, so 50 is my max range. So whether or not you'll be able to go out completely out to 80 yards, well, that's going to depend on your bow setup, your anchor point, and all that stuff. Um, okay, now I'll spend some time uh, talking about the good and the bad with this site. Um, one of the first things, if you do a lot of research on this site, you'll find guys saying, well, I had to set it down lower, even though the chronograph said this, I, I set it down just a little bit lower to reach that, and that was my experience too. The other problem I had with it, this is not the original one that I had, uh, the very first one I had, uh, the dial knob was extremely tight to turn. And when I turned it, all the finish came off through this area. Every bit of it. it was, I guess this was down too tight or something. That just happened straight out of the box from a factory. Now, I'll say this. Um, Trigicon on their customer service, I'll give them about a 9.5 out of 10. They took care of the problem. They did replace the, the whole site. They did take it back. They did send me the shipping labels and the old nine yards on that. The reason I take the halfway from them, because trying to get a hold of their customer service ain't the easiest thing to do. You pretty much have to do it through email to get a hold of them to begin with. Um, so they take care of their problems. They, 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 they do back their stuff up. But at the same time, you know, I like talking to a human, not a computer. I don't, you know, don't always want to use an email. Some of us are like that. Most outdoors guys don't really like messing with the indoor computers and stuff like that. Now, when you look for these sites, um, the best price I keep finding for these sites is being new is Optics Planet. And no, I'm not in any way associated with them. I'm just trying to tell you guys, I actually got mine through Optics Planet. Um, they run about 474 brand new. Uh, you can find them used around here and there, somewhere around 380. Um, now these did go a facelift when they, after they first came out with them in 2011. One of the reasons was guys didn't really like how small the bubble was here. Now this is also obviously the newer one. It's got the larger bubble in there. They wanted a bigger scope ring and it actually had a bigger dial. And it also had the lockdown pin here that they took out of it. Now you may notice, uh, what's this in here? Well, this is the Bad River Outdoors tagged out archery rangefinder. I put that in there. Um, I didn't order it with it. You can go to their website and order this site with that already in. If you want this piece, I recommend you do that. It was a pain in the butt to get that installed on the inside of it. Maybe I just wasn't holding my mouth right or doing something wrong. Um, 
And you may ask, well, why would you want a tagged out rangefinder inside your single pin sight? Uh, it ain't like you can move if you're at draw. And these only really work if you're at full draw. Well, I shoot my 20 yard pin at 30 yards for reasons like, okay, I've had deer standing there at 15 yards. Okay, I got my 20 yard pin on them. I draw back, wind swirls, deer spooks for a second, runs a couple yards and then stops. Well, instead of laying down the bow, picking up my range finder, I can put the sight on him and kind of guess where he is. And, and these work actually quite well uh, as far as guessing that. And let's say the deer ran out to 30 yards. Well, I practiced my 20 yard setting at 30 yards. I know how much to hold over and still go with it. Uh, I guess you could let down and take your chances with that, but uh, it's just one of them extra little things not really necessary but i did it anyway just why not why not anything that you can do to help yourself be more successful out in the field i recommend you go ahead and do it also one of the things i wanted to talk about and one of the things i really love about this site is these huge fiber optic wraps they got to go around and the clear post that you know that that's so transparent when you're out there shooting you don't even notice that you see the big great triangle um you don't need any lights for this but i'm going to kind of light it up to show you how it looks like when sun's hitting it uh it's not quite that bright i got the little micro stream pointed right to it but you see the transparency in the post let me pull that away a little bit a little bit a little bit see if i get there we go that's that's still too bright but that you're kind of getting the idea on how that works um the transparency in the, in, in the post itself is great uh, that's something that doesn't matter what bow sight it is. It's always bothered me a little bit is the black post sticking up holding the fiber optic into place. So that to be illuminated like that is really good. Now when it gets down to low light, and I took a couple shots tonight in the lowest light that the camera would actually still pick up. Of, and the camera actually shows it as being brighter than what it actually was. For those first moments of the day, last moments of the night, this sight really, that's where the sight really shines and comes into play. And also forever forget, one of the nice things about using this site is that little green tip. Uh, you guys want pinpoint accuracy? Well, there it is. It, I, I don't know how you can do it any better than what Trijicon did with this site. Because uh, you can just point if your eyes can see it and you got 20 year old eyes. My 40 year old eyes, but at least I got the whole green triangle which is plenty enough for me to see and apply to the target. But you can really lay that tip to the bottom of something and, and aim in like nobody's business. Uh, you know, it, it really lets you concentrate on stuff. You can forget everything. Everything else will really become transparent. And that's one of the things that I really love about this site. Um, now, with my particular size, I think I'm using a 5 16 peep. I can't really see the green ring here in here. Uh, it's there. I'm leaving it on there. No reason to take it off. But it may not be necessary for you. Now, as far as single pin sites go, um, there's not... There's not a whole lot that will actually compete with this site because uh, there's nothing built quite like it. Um, but we will start, we've already kind of mentioned price one, so we'll go back into that again. $474 for a brand new one. Uh, it doesn't really matter what finish you got on it. It comes with, you know, the Lost Camo, which is on here. I bought that one. I bought the Matthews Bow. Uh, Real Tree, APG, Mossy Oak, and Black. Uh, if I go back and do it again, I'd, I'd do Black. And for a simple reason is all my accessories on my bows will be black from now on. I've matched them up quite a few times uh, with camo and they look good but when you switch camo now you got offset camo it bothers me but it doesn't you know um, this is off the Z7 Extreme now now it's going on to the Hoyt Nitrum that's also why I to turn the speed up the Hoyt Nitrum is actually a little bit faster uh, than what my Z7 Extreme was not by much uh, but I did have to turn the sight up to, to make it match up and it's still being sighted in for that bow i just took it off for this review because trying to have the bow there and getting a close-up of this would just be aggravating annoying and what would be the point so but now that i'm rambling on a little bit um back to the point of the cost of the site 474 dollars well there's a lot of bow sites that you can get out there uh for way less than that but you won't get everything that you're getting here um react one would be a site cost way less you can buy two maybe even three of those for one of these but you don't get the single yard increments on that um spot hog 
okay, well, I can dial and do them in. Yeah, okay, but both of those lights, you're also going to have to buy batteries for your rheostat light, and the Spot Hawk doesn't even come with a rheostat light. So those are two things that uh, you don't get with that. So you really got to decide, is it worth it? Uh, to me, this is an investment piece. This is a site that will go on many bows over the years as long as they quit making it. Now, being that it is tritium fiber optic, if it's like uh, most tritium, most tritium fiber optics or tritium sites have about a 10 year lifespan before that starts giving up and, and you lose that ability. So as long as they keep making the Aki pin there, you can change that. Now that piece right there by itself, you know, you're going to pay $280 for it. But let's just see how it works. I'm going to kill the lights in there and see if I can even record it. And I'm going to use safety checked uh, Glock 20 with some night sights on it to, uh, to see if a comparison. Well, there you can see the sights on the Glock 20 working at night. Completely dark in here. It's actually kind of hard to do this. Now let's look at the Accupin sight. Yep, you can just barely make it out in the center of your screen to see how it's going to work. Um, but that's actually pretty good brightness. When they, when they set these sights up, they did not want to make it super bright. Because in the lowest light of conditions, you are not going to want... A site that's over blaring. Uh, if you can just pick it up and see it, it's actually harder to find your. You got to have a good consistent anchor point to even worry about that feature anyway. Um, if your anchor point's off and you're not seeing your site correctly in your peep site, yeah, you're not going to hit anyway. So what would be the point? Okay, guys. Um, weird thing. Battery died while I was recording that last part, but it did give me the opportunity to go back and look a little bit. Um, you could see barely see the Glock sites. I could see them good in the viewfinder, but it wasn't showing up very well in there and I could not see the, the Trigicon AccuPen at all in that. Okay and one other thing I forgot to mention here before if you wanted more sight picture um, they do offer a dovetail base for this and you can extend by two I think it's two to six inches I could be a little bit off on that but top of my head uh, but it does cost another sixty six dollars and it wasn't a piece that I really felt like that I needed. Um, overall um, so I'm trying to think how I'd rate the site. I would say mm, 9 out of 10. Um, seeing very little problems with it. It pretty much works the way they say it's going to work. I don't particularly care for Trujicon's customer service. I do like the fact that I don't have to make my own tapes and that's laser etched. But I mean when it's dark you can't see this anyway. And I think some of the newer sites that are coming out they actually build in a light that you can actually see your yardage tapes. Um, a lot of that's a lot of money wrapped up into to one piece of your bow. Uh, would I call it the best archery sight of all, or even the best single pin sight of all times? I don't know. That's going to be an opinion. Your opinion might vary a little bit from mine on that. Um, ultimately, is it a good sight? Yes, I think it's a great sight. Um, is it a conversational piece? Absolutely. Is it going to be worth the money you spend on it? Well, if you, if you shoot your bow a lot, uh, you want to invest in a site that you can have for many, many years to come and, and keep using the same site over and over again, yeah, but I wouldn't recommend it getting in camo. i just go ahead and get it in black. That way you ain't got to worry about it unless you're going to use the same camo on all your bows forever. Maybe you will. Um, that's the only thing I can say about it. I did have the problem with the finish coming off the first one. Trijicon did take that off. And uh, they did fix that they do stand behind the product. Um, most guys on the original version of this site said that theirs was off, that the, the bow rhythm was off by five to eight yards out of 80 yards. But uh, I'd, I'd like to see them shoot with another site at that distance before I can 100% take their word on it on how far they were saying that it was off. Uh, ultimately, I think the, uh, the investment is up to you. Uh, whether you think it's actually valuable to you and it's worth every penny that you spend on it or not, search around, maybe deals, um, maybe you can pick up a good uh, a used one that somebody didn't like. Um, I just tell you to go ahead and buy it brand new. If you're going to buy one with a tagged out archery rangefinder, just go to uh, Bad River Outdoors and, and get it from them. It'll be a lot easier installation for you. It's kind of aggravating to get it set in there just right, uh, far as, at least as far as this one goes. So, ultimately, it would be up to you whether you decide that this is a good investment piece or not. 
and this is my review and I did take some light dark shooting a little bit for you um, post here at the end thanks for watching